Now, this next story, they're calling it Cicada Geddon. And if you near you live near them, you know how noisy cicada, cicadas can get. But this year, parts of the US will see like biblical levels of a mass invasion. That's because two different cicadas that usually pop their bodies out of the ground to get frisky every 13 to 17 years are coming out at the same time. And if you live in the Midwest or the Southeast, get ready because up to a trillion, that is a trillion with a T of those bugs are gonna show up in numbers we haven't seen in literally centuries. I mean, the last time this happened, Thomas Jefferson was president. And joining us now is Dr. Gene Kritsky. He's the Dean of Behavioral and Natural Sciences at Mount Joseph University. Thank you so much for being with us, Professor. Cicadas in and of themselves are, are not a rare occurrence. So can you explain a little more clearly why this year is this super brood and how does this work? Well, you're right. The, the, the emergence of cicadas is not unusual. It happens usually 12, 12 out of every 17 years. But this year is different because we've got two different broods emerging during the same year. Uh, brood 13, which is a 17-year cicada emerging in northern Illinois and, and, and in close environs. And then brood 19, which is a 13-year cicada emerging through the southern, uh, northern parts of the southern states. And uh, as you mentioned, this last time these two specific broods emerged uh, was in 1803 when Thomas Jefferson was president of the United States. And what makes this so much more of an interest to people is that there are areas in Illinois where the two pop the two broods will slightly overlap. Uh, hmm. I think some people might have the wrong idea that there's going to be billions more at that spot because it's at the extreme edge of both of the broods. But that hmm. in itself, the close proximity is very unusual. Ah, and so what does a billion, what to do tr a trillion cicadas sound like? I mean, how, how loud could this get? And, and Professor, I mean, I ask you this with the very loud uh, wallpaper behind you. I mean, I can already hear them in my ears. What are we going to hear? Well, I have measured cicadas uh, uh, in, in large emergencies up to 96 decibels. And to put that in perspective, mm. uh, where I measured that was a cemetery on the flight path towards Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky International Airport. And you couldn't hear the jets anymore. What? The cicadas were so loud. Wow. And so this is this is going to be something that everyone is experiencing in, in those areas, and they're going to be experiencing them day in, day out. Uh, here's something that I did not think that we'd be talking about this year, but uh, can you tell us a little bit about this cicada STD thing that's going around? Like, uh, is there an STD that is going to ravage cicadas? Well, what, what it is, uh, the cicadas get a fungal disease. Uh, we're okay. not sure how the nymphs get it in the first place, but we do have evidence to suggest that indeed it is spread during the adult population through uh, sexual contact. And so it is an STD in that case. And the, the reason that we have that evidence is because we find germinating spores inside the reproductive systems of, of cicadas. Uh, and what's unusual about this particular fungal disease is it turns males into hypersexualizes them and they start acting like females when they hear another male cicada uh, sing its mating song. And uh, that's rather unusual. And uh, uh, so <laughs> it's not going to ravage everything, but probably in some of the more denser areas, anywhere between 20 and 30 percent of the cicadas towards the end of the emergence might be exhibiting uh, the sign of the fungus disease. Oh, uh, sorry, uh, I'm trying to wrap my head around that. So this fungal disease hypersexualizes the cicadas when they hear the mating call, and then they just do more of well, that, or does it stop the procreation? Or I mean, is this is this well, going to males? Let's reduce. The let's look at males in particular. When a male that's infected with the fungus hears another male call, he responds mm -hmm. to that male like he's a female. In other words, females right. don't have a call. They basically flick their wings at a certain point in the call. And so, when an infected male hears another male sing, he flicks his wings and pretending and gives the signal that he's a female. The huh. uninfected amorous male comes in and uh, gets inoculated. Wow. Okay. So he gets inoculated, but that the male doesn't get pregnant. Does this mean that there are possibly no. going to be less cicadas? Well, it means that those cicadas, what usually happens in many cases, some of the cicadas have already laid all their eggs and already mated. Mm, okay. But uh, uh, when, you, when you say there might be fewer cicadas out there, we know that the average female has about 500 eggs. Uh, there's going to be a trillion of these things. That means there's going to be half a trillion females times 500. So I don't think that the fewer eggs being laid is, is a real issue for the cicadas. 
This is the craziest biology lesson I've ever had. Dr. Gene Chris, thank you so well, thank very you. much for joining us. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.